That's a relief. I must say, Christopher. What? <laughs> so yesterday, Chris alluded to the Joe Wicks fart at the beginning of his live session. And uh, I honestly thought he'd got a sound effect ready there. Um, actually, I did have some baked beans yesterday, but I couldn't muster up anything to compete with Joe Wicks. Um, the dog isn't here. Well, she is here, but she wasn't sitting here this morning because I've got a hot glue gun on and it was a little bit of jeopardy. Um, so she's fast asleep at my side. Anyway, good morning, everybody. I'm very pleased there wasn't um, a fake fart at the beginning of that. <laughs> I was like preparing myself for it. So today we're going to be making my favorite thing which is a Mexican nichos, uh, which is kind of a shadow box for want of a better description, made out of a sardine tin. I know it's completely random, but I love it. Um, so, and I've worn my Mexican top specially, even though it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> so I had to put another top on underneath it. So I look a bit odd, sorry. But I thought, you know, I should fly the flag as it were. So I've got my Mexican top on. Um, so when we went to Mexico um, a few years ago, I bought a couple of these nichos, uh, which currently hang in our studio, actually, where um, I think, obviously, they're not made out of sardine tins. They're made out of metal, though. Um, actually, can you just switch to the overhead shot for me qu quickly, Chris, so I can show everybody these? So this one is um, quite entertaining. So they've, they tend to have little glass doors on them, which obviously isn't something I'm going to show you today, but if you were, had access to some glass, you could add glass at the front, I guess. So this one uh, in the Spanish translator says, uh, he or she who smokes will go up in smoke. I think that's what that means. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little um, skeletal figure with um, a cigarette and a glittery dress. And then I've got another one here that um, is many kisses so they've got like little little coils of metal here and then that allows you to open the door but i just love them so much they're often religious these uh shadow boxes so they've obviously you know of, often they've got the virgin mary in them and little i'm not really into all of that i think rosie bought one like that but I like these that weren't religious anyway as you can see they're very brightly painted and they've got a little hanger for the wall and here's my version. What do you need? Right, let's get down to it. You need a tin of sardines, I'm afraid, whether you like sardines or not. Give them to the dog if you don't. Eat them if you do. Actually, these are quite nice. These are the Waitrose ones with chilies in them. Very nice. Also, such a lovely design on the tin, which actually isn't that important because once you've finished your, yours, you're not really going to see it unless you see it from the side, maybe. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the sardine tin looks like. And actually, I did find myself stopping by the sardines in Waitrose the other day, pondering over buying an oval one or a round one, which would make a difference. So obviously the shape of them is relevant. But from this shape here that I bought here, I just want to show you the one that Rosie made, my daughter. If we can just switch again to the overheady, please, Christoph. So this one, Rosie made. So as you can see, she's cut out. This. I'm just going to turn it over and show you. Oh, it's quite all precarious on the back here, all the gluing. Um, but the, the, she's cut out the wings here. And then she's obviously got a little Mexican um, heart at the top here. And then there's various things in there. And she's done this little 
uh, ziggy zaggy bit down the sides here and there's a little selection of items and she's painted a little thing there it's very nice anyway uh, so all that one's all painted I just wanted to show you the others actually Chris if we could just carry on on the overhead so this one I made for Chris uh, Valentine's Day a few years ago so this symbolizes him on the left this is all his electricery and his TVs and his batteries and his cables and then it goes over and all the love spurts out of his cable onto my <laughs> so to speak matron onto my felted heart here with the embroidery and the tassels and so on and and it says true love at the top here uh, and again that's just cut out of the front of the sardine tin as are the wings here and then quickly show you birthday breakfast in bed which was one I made him for his birthday a couple of years ago. So this has got the music underneath the duvet, which is a music box akin to this. OK, so I'll talk to you about how you can get this in there if you want to do that. And then he's needle felted in here. It plays happy birthday. He's got needle felted egg on toast, cup of coffee there. And then finally, the one that I'll be showing you today, which is I am a sardine, which is again just a normal sardine tin with a heart and some waves cut out here and a needle felted sardine in the middle, which we now have a little kit for. Hello. And I will be showing you how to make this. So this little sardine, let me just show you, it's very clever, is actually just balanced on a pin. Can you see that? That comes through from the back. So more on that later. But let's get down to some sardine tins. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is eat them, whatever, or put them in the bin. <laughs> and then you want to put this through the washing machine not the washing machine, the dishwasher, that's it. Sorry, <laughs> not the washing machine. Why did I just say that? Through the dishwasher till it comes out beautifully clean and no longer smelling of fish. And then you want to um, paint it. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into this in a lot of detail, but what sort of paints do you need? Well, I've just got cheap crafters acrylic here. It doesn't really matter. It, you don't have to buy paint specially for this. You've probably got some tester pots. If you're like me, you've got a whole drawer full of all the tester pots that any company ever makes. So little tins of paint are ideal. So anything like that is ideal. Any acrylic is ideal. You probably don't want to be using watercolour. You need something like a thick, gloopy paint. If you want it to get to, if you want to get it to dry quickly, use a hairdryer top tip um, and then you will need to varnish it okay so I've just done a first coat on here I am literally just going to slather some more on really really quickly just so you can see how easy this is because this is not you don't feel like you need to be an artist for this bit okay I've just squirted some bits of um, acrylic into my little pot could you go to the overhead please Christoph? I've got so many trimmings everywhere. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Okay, so I'm literally just going to add a little bit more paint. So it's really, really quick. No messing about. Get it covered, okay? And if you're going to be using some bits here, I'm just going to show you now. If, say, for example, you wanted a heart to sit at the top, I'm just going to quickly, live on camera, without having planned it previously, cut out a very quick heart shape, which will probably be slightly skew with. Try not to cut my fingers in the process. There we go. Um, and then you can see, let me just grab a different paintbrush, a little bit of red, and we'd slather that on there as well. Right, okay, so that's basically that. We're just painting it. It's not rocket science. So I'm just gonna leave that in there to dry. The next very important thing is to then varnish that. Because of the nature of it, it will rub off really easily. Now, any varnish will do um, an acrylic water-based varnish. Again, just slather it on with a paintbrush. I have, of course, got some glitter varnish. Well, you know, if you've got spy varnish, it might as well have glitter in it. So I have already put some glitter on the one I'm working on. I'm just gonna move that one that's wet now out of the way. So get everything painted, mix a little bit of the colors together to get some different tones. And so don't just paint it green, maybe mix your green with a bit of white at the top, mix your green with a bit of blue at the bottom, get some interest. If you hate it, paint over it. Just experiment with that a little bit and use some nice colors um, on some you know bits that you've cut out. So the one I did with the wings, 
I have painted it pink, actually a couple of different shades of pink just to give it some tones, highlights, low lights. And then I've just stamped some little red polka dots over the wings and then I've varnished them with the glitter glue. Okay, so now you need to think about what's going to go inside. And if you want to theme it for Valentine's Day for a friend, they could be female, male, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just find something that you feel sums them up. Okay, so with Chris, it was his electricery and his wires and his cables, of which there are many lying around everywhere. Don't but it could be absolutely. Sorry? Don't know what you mean. <laughs> but it could be absolutely anything. Um, so if somebody's fluffy and loves fluffy things, obviously that's dead easy. Um, you know, if their hobby is horse riding, well, you know. Actually, I have got a mirror here that I've been pimping, obviously, on a slightly different tack. But um, there's some stick-on sheep and a goat here. And then I've used my dear little beads, which I'm going to talk about in a minute as well. So you can spell out little words and phrases and names, which is also another nice thing to do. Now... I have been using my glue gun, okay, we do now sell these glue guns, they come with three glue sticks and I've also been using some of our iridescent glittery glue sticks. Um, but you could quite as easily, just as easily use, Chris? Gem tack for all your sticky needs. <laughs> you could quite as easily use gem tack, okay, you don't need to use a hot glue gun, but I have actually got it plugged in which feels a bit scary because I'm sure I'm just going to Jeffy. end up with everything stuck together and my fingers burnt. Anyway, yes, we do like a little bit of jeopardy, love a bit of jeopardy. So what you need to think about really is gathering all these things together to make your, your, your nichos for whoever you're going to make it for. Um, I am going to focus on the old sardine theme here. So I just wanted to talk about beads briefly. So bits of fabric, bits of trimmings. So if you could just go to the overhead again for me, please, Christopher. So you can see in this one that I'm working on here, maybe actually go to the real close-up, close-up, that's oh, it. Oh, you want my close-up now, do I'm do I'm gonna you? get my paint out of the way before I drop everything in that. So what, I love your close-up, close-up. What makes you think I wouldn't? You didn't want it last week. I, what, last no, week you wasn't didn't. appropriate. You didn't want it. Anyway. <laughs> I have got a little selection of uh, my beads here. I want to just talk you through the ones we sell. We sell little packs of mixed ones like this. We sell these boxes of like pearly ones and chippy ones and small ones which come in all the colours. We sell the Toho beads which are the glass seed beads which come in literally loads and loads of colours. I've just picked up the sea themed ones here. We now sell these little stick on gems. These are hearts in red and pink. We've got these pearlized ones. But more importantly and more excitingly than that are these letter beads which I've been using quite a lot of recently. All the letters of the alphabet. So we've got them in black and white and now we've also got these coloured ones here as well which are really pretty. So you can see I have just spelt out the name of the kit, which I did also say to Chris earlier, if we ever get a boat, it needs to be called... What do you mean, if we ever get a boat? When we get a boat. It needs to be called Queen Sardine, I think. That's a good name. So I can see, I've, as you can see, I've just... I'm going to turn this over. Hopefully nothing will fall out. Uh, this is a lovely sardine tin. Look at this. This was sent to me from Judith in the Netherlands. So pretty. Um, I feel it's kind of wasted on the back there. Anyway, you're seeing it. So, and you can see I've just cut out these shapes here for the front and I've cut out a little boat. They're all hot glue guns together, okay, all of these bits. You could gem tack them together, but the hot glue gun works really quickly and effectively. Um, and then I've painted this pink, this green and yellow and this red. I've just hot glued them all together and stuck them on. Then inside, I just want to show you some of the trimmings I've used actually, because these are rather splendid. These are, well, I mean, they're just Christmas glittery trimmings but they've worked really well for the sea I think so I've used some of the blue and some of the green there oh can you see Instagrammers some of the blue some of the green there okay um, and then I also have been using the glitter trimmings lovely those there and then I've also just I love this trimming we've got this in all the colors it's got like beads on it um, and a, a velvety bit in the middle. We also do have lots of separate um, sequins if you want to use those. I did do an alternative version actually with the colours. Uh, I didn't love it as much and I put a piece of this trimming, this lacy one underneath. Didn't love it as much um, and changed it to this one. But you know, either or, loving a scallop. 
and then I've put some of these red bits here and then I've just started to glue some of these beads in at the bottom I thought I might do a live gluing session now oh here we go jeopardy jeopardy hot glue hot glue where are they right let's just stick one in there maybe stick another one in there okay you, you get the the general idea I won't bore you with that and then obviously I have put the um, baby pom-pom trim around the edge so this one's got the pink on it here and I've put a little blue tassel at the bottom and a heart button so this one I've gone for yellow dare I do some more live what do you reckon Chris all right, well, you're in for a penny, in for a pound. It's Go gone on. very spaghetti-like, this what glue. Else? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's like mozzarella. Ooh. Hang on, let's just see if we can just glue around there. Although this is not something I really need to show you because it's not very complicated. But anyway, you get the general idea. So I'm just going to glue that on around there. Just wait for that to dry, and then I'll just trim that off. The, the trouble with the glue gun is it does dry very quickly, so you need to work fast fast and under pressure okay anyway and then I was thinking that I'd put one of these little gorgeous um, tassels at the bottom and again these come in all the colors so you probably need a little tassel just hanging off the bottom there in bright pink that's my plan okay so now I'm going to and these were just glued on as well with the glue gun obviously okay um, and there's various things that I've spelt out Oh, they were. It did say hello there. I've moved them all out of the way. Oh, the other thing is, the other thing is, <laughs> the back of the sardine tin needs this on it. So this is the bit that you open the sardines with. I stood in the supermarket looking for one of those old tins with a key. They don't exist anymore, do they? That's probably a good thing. Why? Well, every, my memory of them was that you always you cut your fingers. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, it's probably a good thing. Anyway, I just thought it might be quite nice to see, but... Anyway, they, they don't sell them anymore. Don't look for those. So they've all got these ring pulls. So yes, yeah, so pull, twist it off. Be careful you don't cut your fingers, obviously. And then um, again, the glue gun would be great for this, but you are just going to glue this to the back. And that, hang on, let me show you one that's got one glued to the back. So that is glued to the back. So then that means that you can hang it on the wall. Okay. Um, and it should take the weight of it if it's glued on well. Okay. All right. So... Are there any questions so far, Christopher? So far, no. Nada. Right, okay. Nothing. Everyone's completely fine with eating sardines, washing sardine tins, not in the washing machine, but in the dishwasher. All by hand, but, you know, it's not as thorough, is it? These little things, by the way, we've got a few of these left. This one, oh, you have to put it against a thing to hear it. What song is that, please? Come on, Chris. Uh, Don't know. ACDC, Back to Black. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've got a few of those left. I think we've got the Blue Danube. That wasn't the Blue Danube. That's da 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 And I think we've got Happy Birthday and we've got Jingle Bells. Some, if anyone wants Somebody tell one. us what that tune Oh, was. no, I've just dropped all my things. Hang on. All right, so now I'm going to move on. Was this important? Yes, it was. Just bear with me on live telly while I just pick a thing up from the floor. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so I'm now going to talk you through the Queen Sardine Needle Felting Kit. All right, to make the sardine. Okay, so there's enough wool in the kit to make five or six, a small shoal, let's say, depending on how big you want them. Um, it would be nice to make five actually and have them all sitting like sardines in the tin. Okay, I haven't quite got that far yet. Uh, so I just want to run you through this really quickly as I know, thank you by the way, to all of you that have bought one of these kits this week, much appreciated. And there's been a fair few of you, we've made a lot of these this week, so thank you. Um, so yes, you have the choice of making Five smaller ones, six slightly bigger ones, okay. I always make mine quite small. I'm just gonna remove him from his tin for a second. Um, and what you're going to need really, ideally, is a piece of foam to work on. It makes life a lot easier, okay. And then your kit comes with the two needles, two felting needles that you'll use to felt all the wool together. And it comes with a long length of white, which is the color that you're going to start with. So you start with about, you know 
15 centimeters or so of, of this and that's going to form the basic shape and your basic fish shape okay so Chris if you can just go to the overhead for me a second please thank you um, so this is what's going to form the fish okay and we're going to start with a shape that sort of resembles this I mean basically rolling it up is the hardest bit so I'm just going to show you that and then really you're just needling away until it refines and it turns into a proper fish shape. So when I'm rolling it up here, what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the sides in with my fingers to get the belly nice and round. And so it tapers to each end, tapering here, tapering here, okay. So I'm just going to roll that up really quickly so it's not too boring for you to watch. And you can see that that's my rough fish shape, okay. Then you're going to take your needle and you're literally just going to start stabbing it avoiding your fingers if possible. When you're using these, holding them about halfway down, don't use them too violently, just be really gentle and you, you won't break them. Bit, there we go. Yes, there we go. You can even see all the cuts on my fingers. It's such a good close up. I'm just going to go to this needle. Right, okay. So th this is what I'm talking about here. You want this bulbous in the middle tapering towards each side when you roll up your little fishy shape, okay? When you're using the needles, oh, look, this is so good now. Can you see now when I twist this? you should just about be able to see these little barbs here. Okay, I don't know if you can, but it's those that entangle the wool together as you stab them in and out. So it's important that you get these bits in and out of the wool, but you don't want to do it too violently or too hard because these have a tendency to snap at this part here, which is, uh, as you can see, quite a lot thinner than the bit up the top here. All right, so I'm just gonna move over to this little one here that's already been stabbed a little bit already. And when you're doing this, you're going to keep refining this shape by constantly turning it, okay? And you can see that I'm just stabbing down the length of the shape. And I would probably carry on doing this for between 30 to 60 minutes. How so long? 30 to 60 minutes, Christopher, okay? Which I'm obviously not going to do right now. But what I want to show you is that as you continue to stab it, it will gradually turn into this uh, much, much harder solid shape. As basically what you're doing is you're getting all of the air out of it, okay? Now the tighter you roll this up to start with, the easier it will be. So what you don't want is a situation where this is really, really, really fluffy and it's got a lot of air in it. So if, if I'm just gonna show you again, when you're rolling this up, if possible, keep it as tight as you can here as you're rolling it. Really, really tight, okay? And the tighter you make this, the easier it is to do this. So it might be that you want it a bit bigger, so you could start off with your piece a bit wider but really, really make this nice and tight, okay? So that you haven't got a lot of air in here, okay? And then it's up to you how big you want to make it and how long you want to make it. And when you get it to the right shape, that will taper to the ends and you start to stab it with your needle, okay? Now, I'm just gonna move on to talking now about the designs. So in your kit, what you've got is you've got a long length of this color, which is the smoke color, okay? And that, is going to get layered up and it's going to get turned into a flat piece of felt like this one. And that is going to be what you cut your tail out of. And you're layering it up like this from the piece and then you're stabbing it like this, okay? And you can use your two needles that you've been given together to stab it like this. And eventually that will turn into a piece of felt like this and then you're gonna cut the tail out of it like I have here. And that's when that then gets attached to the ends here. I know it's like gray on gray, you can barely see what's going on here. But as you attach, what you need to do is you take further bits of the smoky color and you lay them down the length of the fish and onto the tail and attach the whole thing together like so, okay. And then with the little colors and the eyes and the dots and the Angelina, you've got all the little colors in the kit. So say for example, we're doing the green, you're literally taking the smallest amount like this, okay. You're attaching it by laying it down the length of the fish like this. 
and by stabbing it in as you go like this, okay? And by laying the colours over the top, so you can see we've got smoke at the top, then we've got a, the sort of kingfisher blue colour, this colour. Then we've got a tiny bit of the bright turquoise. Then we've got the uh, olive. Then there's a tiny bit of pale pink at the bottom here. And that's all stabbed together and then down onto the tail with the smoke that you've made the smoke. Obviously there's instructions in the kit as well. And then you can see this shiny bit here. This is actually our Angelina peacock colour Angelina. And you get a pinch of this in your kit as well. So when you put this on, this handily needle felts in exactly in exactly the same way as the wool does okay so you needle this in as well and then finally you're going to be adding a little eye with the white and the black and then you're going to be adding the black spots going down okay so what i want to emphasize with this is that it's it's not something that you, you can't make the whole thing in 10 minutes it, even though it's tiny and it looks perhaps like it's been made quite quickly, it does take a little bit of time. So I would set aside a couple of hours to make this, okay? If you're making one I'm talking about, people are always amazed when they come to my workshops to make felt, needle felted birds and fish, how long I spend just refining the initial shape because I think that's the key to it, to getting that shape right so it's not misshapen it's not over fluffy and it's not got bits sticking out where it shouldn't have <laughs> so just spend time refining the shape to start with with your needles it's kind of mindless and relaxing so just go into the zone and do that then start to attach all of the little bits of color going down okay then make the tail then attach that and blend that in and then the final bits are the eye and the spots and the, the glittery bit, okay? And then that's one sardine made to go in the tin. Right, okay, so in order to display anything in your tin, what you need to do is sort of make a plan of action. I mean, obviously when I did Chris in bed, um, the duvet is made out of the, the top of the sardine can, and then I've used the other bits of the sardine can to make the little sign that says breakfast in bed. And I've actually needle felted him, and he's propped up on a needle felted pillow. So his body finishes about halfway down, about here, okay? And then the rest of it is the music box. Just while we're on the note of the music box, there's um, a hole here. So I had to make quite a large hole uh, in the side of the sardine tin. I don't actually remember what I used for that. Probably like a hammer and a nail to start with or something dodgy. Mind your fingers. Uh, make a little hole in the side of the sardine tin. Make it big enough for the handle of the music box to go through and put that in first and then start assembling around that. If you're just displaying something in the middle of the sardine tin, like I have with the, the, the actual sardine, um, what I've done is I've just used a dressmaker's pin Okay, so I've gone through from the back, stuck a pin through, and then obviously if something's needle felted, that's perfect, because that can then just sit on the pin. And what, you, what would be ideal is if you then put a little blob of gem tack for all your sticky needs onto the pin before you slide that on, and that would hold it in place. So anything like this, I mean, going back to the ones that I've actually bought, brought to show you from Mexico, um, if you, ha I mean, I'm sure they've just used glue, but anything like this where you've got a figure or a, even a heart, you could do a needle felted heart in the middle. And if you just put a pin through and you could stick that and it will stand proud and it will give you the shadows of it sort of standing proud. Um, and it's just a nice way of displaying it. But I would use a little blob of glue on it as well. And then that's pretty much it. Then I've just put a load of beads at the bottom of this one. I've done actually a bit more painting on this one as well. I've done some waves with my acrylic paint. Um, and then I've literally just glued the tassel and the button at the bottom. When the one, the, the one that I made for Chris, I put a tassel at the bottom of my half and he's got a battery at the bottom of his half. So lots of options, kind of depends what, what you're doing and what you want to make. But if you want to actually do the sardine, I think that's a great way of displaying it. And of course, if you do all five, you could just stick them in and they could all be like they're in the tin. Um, and maybe you could replicate having one of those old key opening tins by curling over a piece of the top. So just 
Obviously be careful when you take this off because it is quite sharp, but you could curl over the piece of metal that's uh, come from the top and then you could get an old key and stick it out the side and you could have that coming over the top. Might be quite a nice idea, methinks. Have we got any questions, Christopher? Uh, no. No. So I think this is a lovely thing to do with children. Oh, oh. oh, I lied. Okay, go Kerry on. Kerry Curtis Hello, on Kerry YouTube. Curtis. Yes. How did you attach the lid to the inside to the in to inside the tin for the bed one? How did I attach the lid to the inside? Oh, I see what you mean. How did I attach this bit? Oh, just with glue around the edge. So I've cut it so that it's literally just small enough to sit in there. So this bit that you've got from the top, which I've now cut up into thousands of little pieces, this bit that you've initially pulled off the sardine tin should be obviously be exactly the same size as the top. So if you just cut that, cut the top third of it off, it will sit snugly on the groove that you've got. So often the sardine tin looks like this with a little groove. Let's go but to the close-up, But this one, up, oh, Julie. sorry, okay, go to the close-up, yes. Good idea, Christopher. In fact, let me move Mr. Sardine out of the way and then hopefully you can see better. So you can see this groove here. So you've pulled it out. So if you just, it, and it fits perfectly to this shape in the middle, if you just slide it down a little bit, down to here, it will give you um, a little ridge to sort of glue it onto. And then inside his body, I don't know if you can see, but his body is kind of pushing against the top of the duvet. Okay. And then I've just used a piece of copper um, metal that I had knocking around to make a little tea tray. And I've made a little napkin out of some paper. I've needle felted an egg on toast. This is just some bits of wire, like garden wire or fuse wire. I've made a knife and fork. The coffee <laughs> is made out of the top of a glue tube or a toothpaste tube you could use. And then I have glued a little handle, oops, there, on the side using some red wire, or did I paint it? I don't remember. His was for his birthday, so there's a birthday hold, candle holder here with a birthday candle in it that was lit when it was presented to him. You can see how I've just used a bit of wire here with lots of glue, <laughs> um, and the same here to attach the hanger for the wall, okay? So that, and then on the front here, I've painted this. Oh, and I do use Sharpies quite a lot. So this is just Sharpied on, uh, or, you know, like a thick felt tip pen, birthday breakfast in bed, and these little signs that I've glued on. Then he's needle felted. All right, so let's talk about this. So he's needle felted from various different colors of wool. I really struggled to find a good hair colour, but then I realised Chris's hair was exactly the same as our Blue Face Lester oatmeal. <laughs> and then, uh, so that worked perfectly. So I've just needle felted some little curls of that into his head. I made his glasses out of, oh look, his glasses have broken. That's actually part of his glasses there. So I made his glasses out of some wire that I painted black. Then I've used all sorts of different colours here. I've used the cream, the flesh, pinky minky, I've used sepia, I've used dusty pink, I've used pale pink, and this is all to make his head and his shoulders. You can't really see the shoulders, so I didn't do a lot of detail on the shoulders. So they're underneath the duvet, the duvet sat on top, the music box is there, and he's got a little pillow, so his head's supported on a pillow. Seems to have lost an ear. Oh no, he hasn't. He's still got an ear. His I always thought it looked like I was in the bath. Oh uh, yes, you could have been in the bath, but then you wouldn't have been covered up if you were in the bath. You could have, you could have put, you, you Oh, I could have done bubbles. You could have done bubbles. Could have with, done needle felted, felted bubbles. bubbles. Well, there you go. Valentine's Day is not far away. There you go. You never know what might materialise. Um, Anyway, lots of fun. And I just think, you know, if I'd made that, if when, if when I'd made that, I'd had these fabulous alphabet letter beads, I probably would have done birthday breakfast in bed in the beads, because I love these. Um, and I've done them here on my little mirror. Did I show you this earlier? I'm losing my brain. Yes. Hello. 
Yes, love those. So you could spell out a name or, um, uh, you know, a love poem. Sorry, I'm covering up my microphone. A love poem or, or anything, or some funny words or some swear words even, I was thinking, using the alphabet beads. Any more questions? Um, Christopher? Uh, uh, no. 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 Okay, so lots of ribbons, lots of trimmings around the edge, in the middle. I've done the lace and the sequins and the beads and all the rest of it. So I just now need to mount another sardine in the centre of that one and that one will be done with the queen sardine boat at the top. Um, if there's no more questions, I will briefly describe what I'm going to show you next week, which is completely different to all of this, completely different. So next week, I'm going to be showing you how to knit with circular knitting needles. Ooh! Ooh. Now, I did, I did a little poll on my Instagram about whether people would want this or not, because I wasn't sure. But we find so many customers come into the shop that have never used circular knitting needles. And I'm always amazed. And I just thought, let's just spend a bit of time talking them through. Because a lot of jumpers th these days, this beautiful jumper that was our jumper club jumper, knitted in the round. They're knitted on circular needles. No seams. Love that. The same for hats, whoopsie, hats. Okay, I'm going to be getting some more hat patterns on the website this week, especially for this. But again, so quick and so easy. And the secret that a lot of people don't seem to know is that you don't need to purl. Chris is looking amazed at me. I, he I'm, was looking I'm, at me I, just then, like with bated breath. I, uh, with, with a sea of faces of anticipation <laughs> he was literally wondering what i was going to say but the amazing thing is you don't need to purl you just knit and it gives you stocking stitch when you use a circular needle you just knit. he's open mouthed now the other thing of course that i use them for i've just finished this blanket as you may have seen it's on our blog now uh, the pattern for it using that wonderful malabrigio rattler Again, it's not knitted in the round, but again, one uses the circular needle just to go back and forth because it holds all of your stitches on the wire in the middle and they don't fall off. And it's just super handy. Plus, of course, a lot of people actually, particularly recently since lockdown started, have been knitting the giant blankets using our wool tops. And again, this is what you want, the 30 millimeter needles, the great big broom handle needles, but not broom handles. They're circular needles that have got the wire, but again, you're just knitting backwards and forwards. So anyway, I won't carry on going on about that. Here's another hat I knitted on circular needles. Just round and round and round, super fast, super, super quick, super easy. So if you want to join in with that next week, get yourself some yarn, get yourself some circular needles. We've got them in all shapes and sizes. I, the other ones I'm just gonna briefly touch on next week as well are the little tiny ones that you use for socks and sleeves. So gone are the days where you need to knit your sleeve as a, as a rectangle and piece it together, although obviously that's still viable and possible and a lot of people do do that. But you can now just knit it round and round and round and round on the circular needles. So get yourself some circular needles and some yarn ready for next week. I'm if you've never done it before, don't be scared. It's actually way, way, way easier than you think. And, um, and that's what we're doing. So I can't wait to show you. So I um, have a lovely week, everybody. Um, stay well and enjoy the sunshine today. If it's sunny where you are, it's sunny here. I'm quite excited about that. And we will see you next week. But thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any more questions, pop me a message. But ciao for now. It's Jillian Gladbrad. It's Jillian Gladbrad. Tell me